know we're all supposed to be worried about a slowdown in travel and leisure spending, but did you guys happen to notice the tremendous quarter that Wyndham Worldwide reported yesterday? In case you're not aware, Wyndham is both the world's largest hotel company, think Ramada, Days Inn, among others, as well as being the number one purveyor of timeshares and vacation rentals. So when Wyndham Worldwide comes out and delivers a one-cent earnings beat off a 97-cent basis with higher-than-expected revenues that increased by 6% year-over-year, not to mention some pretty robust full-year guidance, you better start paying attention. Even after rallying nicely in the wake of those numbers, Wyndham stock is still only about 4 bucks off its 52-week low, selling for less than 12 times earnings because of these big-picture fears about a slowdown in travel. Clearly, management believes in the stock. Is, they think it's a bargain here because the board just approved of a $1 billion increase in Wyndham's buyback, bringing the total repurchase authorization to $1.3 billion. Hey, you know what? That's roughly 17.7% of the company's market cap. Better, Wyndham gave you a 19% dividend boost, which brings the yield up to nearly 3% for a growth stock. All of these moves suggest to me the stock has gotten too cheap to ignore. Don't take it from me. Let's check in with Steve Holmes. He's the chairman and CEO of Wyndham Worldwide. To hear more about the quarter and his company's prospects, Mr. Holmes, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank Good to see you. Good to see you, Steve. Have a seat. Thank you. All right, Steve, the two things that tell me that the stock is cheap. And the first one is your company has bought back a monumental amount of stock. I mean, I'm talking about shrinking in the last five years mm-hmm. by, you know, to maybe the biggest of almost all companies that follow. Second, you've been a buyer of the stock. Now, there's no reason for you to buy the stock other than if you think it's going up. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and I, I have a big holding in the stock. Right. It's my, it is my net worth. Uh, but it's so cheap right now. I just bought some today because it was it was beyond beyond the point of being cheap. So we I bought some. And our company's been buying it. Well, 166 million down to 119 million now right. in five years. You yeah. bought back. Yeah. I mean that's almost like taking it in private because it's so cheap. Well, we we produce a lot of cash flow, right. and we've said consistently that if we don't have acquisitions to pursue. We will devote that money to paying larger dividend, as you noted, as well as buying back the stock. Okay, one of the things I love about you is that you don't sugarcoat. I mean, here it is. Right at the end, you talk about, okay, listen, we got a downturn in uh, Brazilian travelers uh, flowing to Miami and Orlando. It's still okay, but uh, you have to market for them. And then you say, point blank, you didn't think that the oil patch could hurt as much, but it does. It's not like you're sitting there saying everything's fine, but you're saying that those things have driven the stock down too low. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, those those things affect one part of our business, which is our hotel business, what? which frankly is a, is not the largest segment. This largest segment by far is our timeshare business, and it's doing spectacularly. Right. Um, and and I never thought that I'd see Revpar in the in the oil producing markets in the U.S. go down by 30 percent. Right. I mean, that's that's an incredible drop. And despite that, we still had an increase. Without that, we would have had a healthy increase. Right now, one of the things that I like about your, your business model is that you, frankly, are kind of both Airbnb and hotel. I mean, you've got this fabulous reservation system. If you wanted to go, I mean, you have a, you ha- have it at the home away deal. I mean, it's not like that you couldn't be Airbnb if you wanted to. Yet people keep telling me, Jim, be careful with Wyndham Worldwide. Airbnb is going to kill them. No, no. Airbnb is a it's a competitor in a sense, but it's not really. They they do listings. They'll take listings of people's uh, homes or the condos and they'll rent them out. We do what's called professionally managed rental. Is we'll take on your property. We do it exclusively. Handle all your rental. Hand the keys over. Collect the money. Make sure the place is clean and make sure it's looked after, which is important if you own a house asset like that. Isn't that a better business? Well, we think so. It's a it's a business that doesn't get as much uh, attraction right. from Wall Street because it's not it's not high tech. It's not it's not social media. It's more of a nuts and bolts business. Great business, tremendous loyalty, and we've been in the business for 70 years. Some of our businesses in Europe have been around for 70 years. So these are long term sustainable business. There was a period where there was a downturn because of a credit crunch. Um, some people are talking about a credit crunch in the oil patch and uh, high yield. Are you seeing anything that makes it so that we should be worried about credit and timeshare? No, not at all. Our, our credit, our credit statistics are as good as they've been. Our provision has improved as a percentage. Uh, so no, we feel we feel really good with the dynamics of the business right now. We, you know, there's nobody like us with the mix that we have, right. which is wonderful. The diversification makes us very strong. Uh, there is something going on in the stocks, though. I mean, we've had Marriott on, we've had Starwood on. These are pretty good companies like mm-hmm. yours. And now many of them more hotel and not just. But we did have Marriott vacation rentals on. And the stocks just keep going down. And frankly, Steve, look, I've known you for a long time. Maybe you can help me. Is there something that I'm just missing? I mean, you, you mentioned Texas. You mentioned the Brazilian market and the do- stronger dollar. You're both, but those shouldn't equal the price declines. No. And, and P.S., if you look back, you mentioned the downturn 08, 09. Yeah. We did really well during that time. We've got a very, very resilient business model. 
I can't explain it, and I think I told you this last time I was on. We'll handle the E, but we can't handle the P. The market right, has right. to decide what's going to happen there. And, and so we'll continue to produce. We've been consistently producing. We tell you what we're going to do, and then we do it, and we're very predictable. And that's a, that's a good attribute for a company. Is there something secular, gener uh, gener uh, millennial about travel? Uh, I know that, for instance, the millennials aren't, aren't getting cars the way they used to. They tend to try to they would see, search for value. Is, is, is the timeshares, I mean, I know you say in this, listen, they need to be sold, but have they gone out of fashion with millennials? I Ab absolutely not. The millennials, the, the average age of a buyer of timeshare has gone down from 56, 56 years to 39 years. So it's, it's lowering, it's coming down. Uh, and, and frankly, millennials love to travel. They love the experience. They want to get out there. So we think what we're going to see over the next you know, 10 years or so is really the, the democratization of travel. Um, more and more countries have larger middle classes that are going to be traveling, not just the U.S., right. but around the globe. And those middle classes are going to start traveling. And when they do, they might be value conscious, right up our alley. And, and they might like something like timeshare. It's a sharing, it's basically the first sharing economy. Well, you know, like I'm looking at it two ways. One, I think you absolutely made a lot of sense. But two, you wouldn't have bought all that stock if you didn't believe in it yourself. Thank you so much to Steve Holmes, chairman and CEO of Wyndham Worldwide, WIN. Listen, it's a conundrum because I think the stock's really cheap. But more importantly, he's buying. We have money's back at the break. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.